Welcome to another edition of Fireside with Phil, and I have one of my all-time favorite people, Clint Eastwood, to be a guest and tell one of my favorite stories. Now, he is a legend in his own right. He's done so many movies and has uh, been mayor of Carmel and has done so many great things in this world, but one of my favorite things that you've done is promote the game of golf, and we're here at Tehama Golf Course, which you own. It is just beautiful, and I'm so appreciative of what you've done for the game of golf. And one of the greatest stories I've ever seen take place was here at the AT&T tournament uh, with the human chain. Would you mind sharing that? Okay. All right. We, we were, uh, uh, this is when, in the years when Jack Lemmon was always talking about making the cut, and he never made the cut. And finally, ironically enough, he made the cut with the the one time and they the tournament they canceled the tournament so it, it, but he did anyway that was the t talking point for many years and we were out one time we were playing with Greg Norman Jack was the other amateur I was the other amateur and we were playing along uh, uh, let's see Jacobson too Peter Jacobson was in, in, in the other pro in the, in the uh, foursome and uh, so we're out in Cyprus, and uh, we're on the um, 16th hole. And you know, Jack didn't hit it. I don't hit it. The, the, the pros have a chance at it, but it's a tough hole for anybody. And uh, so he f gets one off, and he gets it across the, the little valley, but only into the to the ice flat. And uh, no, he got it up a little bit on, on the on the side, and then. He shanked the next one into the ice flat. And so Jacobson kept saying, oh, keep playing, Jack. Keep playing, because he knew he liked the game so much. He would rather than put it in his pocket. And uh, so it, he hits it again in the ice plant, and it goes down this right on the edge of a cliff. Really dangerous. I said, don't let, I said, don't let Jack swing it there. One swing of the club, that he'll be down that cliff. But so uh, Jacobson says, no, I'll, um, he says, you hold on to him, Clint. You hold on to him, and I'll hold on, or I'll hold on to him, and you hold on and, uh, to, to uh, uh, Greg. And uh, so we're all got a, a human chain hanging down the thing, and Jack, who lays about eight, maybe nine, is, is down taking a shot to make his 15, or whatever he's going <laughs> to shoot on the hole. <laughs> so, so, so it didn't, uh, did you ever think about uh, just letting go? And let him go right over the cliff. Yeah, did that ever cross your mind? You know, it crossed my mind, but I figured, you know, he's a oh, bad guy. Yeah. Even though he can't play golf, I can't either. So we were, you know, we were in there with two guys who could, and uh, it was the usual uh, kind of Bing Crosby esque uh, uh, affair. But now the USGA kind of frowns upon holding people up while they swing. Did that ever? Concern you? you mean holding up the people behind. Uh, just holding oh, up just somebody holding from up. falling down. Did that ever concern it, it didn't, you? It didn't bother me because I didn't know the difference. Yeah, I'm and, not a big fan and, of the rules either, so and, that's whatever. And, and Jacobson and Norman are there. I figure some one of those guys knows what you can't do. Right. But everybody was laughing and scratching, and uh, <laughs> so it was one of those iconic moments in the sport and of this tournament and. To see what uh, what Bing Crosby started many years ago, and what people like yourself and so many uh, stars outside of golf helped to build this game, we're so appreciative because you brought ga the game to so many other people and exposed it to so many other people that never would have uh, been exposed to this game, and we just are very appreciative. Well, it was my introduction to the game. I had I was a some years before I was a. Soldier at Fort Ord, and I came down here when the Bing Crosby tournament was going on, and I sort of snuck into the tournament, and uh, but the, the, and they had uh, and some of the entertainers then were Bob Hope and uh, Rosemary Cloney and all that. And it was it was it was a nice affair, but it um, they used to have it over at the Monterey Peninsula Club, and um, it was it was a great game. So I kind of took it up. I got enthusiastic about it. But um, but Jack Jack was obsessed with it. He loved the game more than any amateur I uh, know. And um, uh, so we decided to do this. And I know they're on 
we would, I know we were, but we, the, P, the PGA would want everybody to pick up and get the hell out of there. Yeah. And, and nobody wanted the, the danger of it all. But Jacobson saw the uh, showbiz thing, a, a part, of, part of it. So we ended up hanging on, and it was great fun. And Jack shot it, he used a little 21 or something like that on the hole eventually. Yeah. And then we're gone. And we're out of there. <laughs> now, when you first started playing, you immediately started hitting bombs. Like, you hit the ball so far. And it was, was this like um, kind of your machismo of being Dirty Harry? You're like, look, if I'm going to play this game, I've got to be the longest driver out here. And you just started cranking it? Is that, or was it just, uh, just natural? I just didn't know better. I just, just swung as hard as I could. And if I hit it, fine. If I didn't, I just fanned it. You I know, totally understand. I do the same that, thing. That was a, you know, a typical amateur deal. I was much, much younger there, and I cared about how far it went. Now, uh, I don't care. I just figure if I can just get it to went. You know, yeah, anyways. I still care. I need... I know. Well, you've got, you've got yeah. the technique. It's a different deal when you do it for uh, your life and your meaning and your income and your, yeah, your no. wife's appreciation. And when people are watching, like... You kind of want to hit bombs, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah. I mean, if you're out on your own yeah. late in the day, yeah. it doesn't really matter. You can hit it short, crooked, straight, whatever. But when people are watching, like, yeah. you kind of want to hit bombs. With an amateur, you, if you can get it off the first tee, you're happy. Because then you figure after that you'll be out there in the back boondocks and nobody will see you if you hit some turkeys. So my first, one of my first AT&Ts were playing Spyglass, and there's this, one of the nicest members at Cypress, Clay Larson. I know Clay Larson. He's caddying for Michael Waltrip. Yeah. And he asked, what is the one thing, a piece of advice that you could help me with uh, to kind of get me through the day as I caddy? And I said, if you were to make it all 18 holes without falling down, that would be... A pretty good accomplishment and he looked very like it was very con he felt like it was very condescending but the fact is the golf course is wet there's a lot of steep little hills up by the tee boxes and people fall all the time he took six steps goes down the tee box feet go out from under him slide on that wet grass falls on his back all the clubs come out of the bag he slides down about eight or ten feet and kind of looks up and Realize he couldn't even do that. So uh, he, he, that was one of my favorite stories because uh, it seemed like we were being insincere, and yet it was uh, you know hard to just make it around the golf course. And Clay is one of the nicest guys you'll ever yeah. meet. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. Those guys, a lot of the caddies over there can play pretty good. They've got their own little uh, club that plays. They let them play you know a couple days a week or something, and. Uh, and it's a great thing. That was a great rotation in those days, playing Cypress, Cypress, Pebble, and Monterey. Yeah. It was the greatest rotation. It was, it was great fun. And then Spyglass came along, and they moved over to Spyglass, and then other things came along. And uh, you know. Well, this place has meant a lot to me because my grandfather was one of the first caddies uh, when Pebble Beach opened up. He was the first part of the first caddy group, and. He would caddy for 35 cents a loop, and as the generations went by, now I ended up winning this tournament five times. My brother caddied for me last year when we uh, ended up winning, and you presented us the trophy. Thank you for doing that. And this place has meant a lot uh, to me and my family over the course of the you know the, this century, really. And so I'm very appreciative of all that this has meant to my family, but also what you and everyone here has done to promote the game of golf and bring it to the masses. So thank you. And thanks for being right. on the show. Thank you. Thank you. And let's see. Uh, let's have number six. I'm in. Huh? We'll be out there. Thank you. Hit it big and straight. You heard it. Bombs.